Hello coders. This video is a walkthrough of how to tab your 2023 ICD-10 CM manual. Um, I do have other videos posted from previous years and they're all pretty similar. So if you'd like to watch those and see exactly um, how I tabbed previous years, I welcome you to do that. Um, but today I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of the manual and show you some of the highlights. Um, before we get started, you'll want to make sure you have tabs. They can be any tabs that work for you. These are the ones I have on hand. So these are the ones I'm using. Um, and then of course a pen. Usually we also have highlighters. Um, so you will definitely need highlighters for other parts of the course, but right now we just need a pen and your tabs. Um, also a little Side note, <laughs> major note, if you are somebody who does not like to write in your books or um, would like to wait until you are preparing for the national exam in order to put in tabs or to start writing or you want to keep your notes in a separate notebook and then copy them over, those are not good plans, okay? I've taught this course many, many times and I've worked with a lot of students and I can tell you the number one thing that students tell me um, when they get to the national exam or when they get to finally prepping for the national exam, um, is that they wish they had written in their books earlier. They wish they had tabbed their manuals better because it helps you code faster, okay? Um, it is not going to reduce the value of your books. If you are not convinced you want to be a coder, you're not convinced this class is for you, writing in your manual today is not going to lower the value of this book. You would still be able to sell it. In fact, it might be worth a little bit more because it's already got tabs in it. Um, it already has helpful notes, things like that. As long as you're writing neatly and clearly, writing in your manuals is a benefit to anyone who's going to use it, okay? So you have to write in them. <laughs> I'm There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to. It is the best tool that you have right now in preparing for the national exam. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, tabs, pen, advice that I can give you. Um, test out your tabs and make sure that once it's dry, it is not going to smudge all the way off after you have written on them. I have never found a perfect pen. I've never found a perfect tab, um, but just try it out and make sure you're going to at least still be able to decipher the tab after it's dried and if you put your finger on it. Okay. Okay. So we will open up here. Again, this is the 2023 manual. Um, Roman numeral page three, we have the dedication from the author. Uh, this is a great page for writing notes. This is a great page to have a table of contents for your notes, which we will get into later. Um, I don't currently have a tab here because we haven't started writing notes yet, but this is a good place to start. There is a table of contents here. Uh, this is not particularly helpful the way that I teach the class or the way that most people use the manual, but there is a table of contents. We're going to skip ahead. The next page, Roman numeral eight is the symbols and conventions tab or section. And this is where we learn to decipher all of the little codes, um, all of the symbols, all of the little notes that we see throughout the manual. So we actually know what we're doing when we're using them. We will do quite a bit with this section. So I would recommend um, putting a tab in this section. Whenever I am tabbing my manuals, if it is not something that is directly related to finding a specific code, um, then I will put the tab on the top rather than on the side of the of the manual. So, and then whenever I am tabbing a specific section, I want that tab to be able to be seen from the front of the book. So I will put it rather than put it right here. I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Oh, I knocked it. <laughs> Hold on. So I put my tab right up here. On Roman numeral nine, it just says symbols and conventions. I don't know if you're able to read that. Okay. So that's on page Roman numeral nine. Then we will skip ahead. And then we get into the 2023 updates. This section is not going to be particularly helpful for you as a new coder. Um, after you've been coding a while, this will be helpful for you because you'll be able to see what changes were made from the previous year, but you've not used the previous year. So this is not gonna be terribly helpful for you. So we are going to skip all of that. 
and you will get to page one, which is regular number one. And this is the introduction to the manual itself. Um, a lot of people skip over this section. I would recommend not doing that. Why? Because there is a lot of really good information in this introduction, and there is information that is used on the national exam in this section. So I would read through it um, and make sure you know what these few paragraphs say, because this will help you. I know it seems like this is just filler information, um, it is not. This is information that they may use on the national exam, and it may help you answer specific questions. So please read through it. The next page, page two, is where we get in to um, the actual end, uh, guidelines. Okay, so these are the actual guidelines for um, coding and everything you'll hear me say this a lot throughout the next you know few classes um the national exam is all about the guidelines everything that you are doing is learning how to apply specific guidelines to specific coding scenarios if that means nothing to you right now that is totally okay um but you still need to know where the guidelines are and understand that they're very very important so i would go ahead and put a tab here Just write a tab, says guidelines. I would put it up at the top because we do not necessarily use the guidelines for finding specific codes, but we do reference them often. So go ahead and put a tab there. And the guidelines section is all of this red section here all these red tabbed pages, okay? And don't worry, well, or <laughs> be warned, we will be going through all of these pages. Um, this is the most important part of this manual. It is how we know how to apply specific codes, okay? But we're gonna skip right through it right now and on to page 55, which is where we have illustrations. This manual bucks specifically, so there's lots of different publishers for the ICD-10. Um, and they're all have the same codes and all of that same guidelines, but they have different features. What's great about the bucks is they have incredible illustrations, um, lots and lots of really good ones. So I would put a tab for illustrations. And there are illustrations throughout the manual as well, but they have their own. This one has its own section and that's all these green pages here. Um, and these are really helpful, not just for referencing for specific issues, but also because there's a lot of white space here and you can write great notes. Um, but I will say on my national exam, there was an anatomy question, which we'll get into what the national exam is and what all it entails um, in another video. But there was an anatomy question that I had no idea how to answer, but luckily there was a illustration that told me the answer. <laughs> Um, and so that was super, super helpful for me. So you really can't underestimate the value of these illustrations. So I'd go ahead and put a tab for those. And then we are going to skip up to page 88. And this is the index, all right? And you'll see it's an alphabetized list um, with all kinds of different phrases and conditions and body parts listed, okay? Um, you do not need to know exactly how to use this right now, but you do need to put a tab here. So on page 89, again, so it will be along the spine of the manual, you will want to have a tab right here that says index, okay? Um, very, very important. And also make sure that when you're writing your tabs, that the words are facing you how you would use it. So I've had some people flip them and that doesn't work because then they can't read them when they're trying to use it. But um, for this section, you will want a tab on page 89 along the spine. Um, and because this section is definitely something we use when we're finding specific codes and we'll get into how we do that later, but wanna make sure you have a tab here, okay? And it's all of these gray pages. It's a really big section. Okay, so then we're going to skip up to 483. 
And this is called the table of neoplasms. This is also something that we will use to find specific types of codes, um, specifically related to neoplasms, which if you don't know what that is, that's going to be growths. So those might be cancerous, they might be benign, um, they might be uncertain, but they're going to be tumors and things like that. Um, so I would put a tab here called neoplasms. And I know you can't really read that. <laughs> so it's a little dark. But I do have a tab here already that says neoplasms. Okay. So it's on 483. And again, we'll get into how to use this table later. It's not near as hard as it looks, I promise. And then to 511 is another very similar table, and that is for drugs and chemicals. And I just have a tab that says drugs. <laughs> so if you want to put that on 511, um, again, on the spine, because we do use this to find specific codes elsewhere in the manual. Um, and again, it's not as hard as it looks, I promise. And then we will skip forward. On 605 is where we start our external cause and injury index. Um, this looks very, very similar to that first index I showed you. It's much smaller though, it's a much shorter index. Um, so I call this external cause. And I'll explain how to use that in yet another video. And for this one, you can put it along the side if you'd like, um, because it, it does work very similarly to the other big index that I talked about, but we use it far less frequently. So I usually actually put it up at the top, but you put it wherever it works best for you, okay? All right. So that's again, 607. That's the external cause index, and I just call it external cause. And that is all of these orange tabs here, okay? And then we're going to get into the actual tabular. And if you are new to coding, this likely doesn't mean much to you, but this is the bulk of our manual and what we're going to spend uh, most of our time looking at when we're working in this book, because this is where all the actual codes are. Um, now this manual is broken up in specific sections. Um, it is not, though it is listed alphabetically, those sections do not end um, with each letter of the alphabet. So there's different chapters and chapter one is going to be both A and B. Okay, um, but when we are tabbing it, rather than tabbing chapter one, which we know would be in this color section, the color purple, we will be putting a tab for each letter. Okay, so we will put a tab where letter A starts, which is on 654. But again, I want to have the tab here along the, the edge. So I will be putting it on a 655, letter A. I just write it like letter A. And I will put that up at the top. Just like, whoop, let me see if you can see it. Just like that. And then I'm gonna go through the manual until I can find letter B. And regardless of what chapter it's in, I will be putting a tab there. Okay, and it looks like B starts on page 668. And I'll use a different color just so I can differentiate it. And I will make sure that um, it flows down the side of the manual pretty easily so I can see it fairly well um, just at a glance. I can see where does B start, where does A start, like that. Okay, and I'll do that with every letter through the manual, okay? Let's get to C and you can see what I'm talking about. And C starts in chapter two, which is the next red section. And it's on page 683. 
and I would just pick a color that works for you. If you want to repeat the same colors over and over, that's fine, but I would differentiate them um, a little bit. So that way you can see it fairly easily, okay? Um, so you're going to go all the way through each chapter and find where each letter begins. Um, you will notice not every letter is represented when we get to the end of the alphabet. That is okay. We will have all the way up through T. And then, so put make sure you go through, put a, put a tab for each letter all the way up through T. And then it goes to V on page 1472. And we will get into why later, <laughs> not, not just the letter Y, but why there's not a U there. We will get to V on page 1473 is where I'd put your V tab. And this will go all the way through Y, X and Y. And then we'll have our Z codes here at the back, starting on page 1561. There's a big green section here, which we will explain later. Um, but for the Z codes, that is a section, so you'll have your letter, your tabs going all the way along the, down the side for each letter, except for you, all the way up till Z. And then for Z, I would put a tab at the top, okay? Now, that does not mean we don't use Z very much. We do use Z, but they are a special category of codes. So I would give them their own section and make sure it's very clear where that section starts, okay? So I will put Z up here at the top. And then um, you will see that U codes are actually at the very, very back. So if you would like to put a tab for your U codes, you can put that at the top as well. I think that works best, but again, it's up to you where you'd like to put them, okay? Um, and then you'll notice there are some blank pages at the back. And these pages are fantastic for very specific notes, which we will get into in another video. But again, if you'd like to put a tab for notes here at the back, that's great too, okay? Anyway, as you can see, I didn't go through every single letter. Um, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can watch my other videos where I do go letter by letter and kind of see how I do it. Um, or if you have specific questions about which letter I'm tabbing or anything like that. But the goal of this is to make sure you can see those extra things that I talked about, um, symbols and conventions, where the guidelines are, illustrations, um, and then the various indexes, which is going to be the regular index, um, the table of neoplasms, the table of drugs and chemicals, and uh, external cause index, which is a, up here at the top. So then you will want to make sure that you have a tab for each letter in addition to those tabs I showed you. And um, if you want to pay special attention to the letters in the back, particularly Z codes and U codes. So we kind of differentiate those. Um, so we do use them a little bit differently. But again, we will get into those in another video. So that is kind of the basics of how I tab this. And again, look at my other videos if you want to see me fully walk through tabbing an entire manual. Um, but these are the, the highlights that I wanted to hit for this specific video. Um, if you do have questions or you'd like a list of where I'm putting specific tabs, let me know. And that's totally fine. I'm happy to provide it. Um, but for the meantime, just make sure you can identify each of these sections and that you have your own tabs placed um, in a way that works best for you where you're not smudging things and where you can see the tabs um, from the front of the manual, okay? 
All right, that's all I have for you for this video. Please let me know if you have questions or concerns and we can address those together. Thank you.